Welcome back. We're talking about logistic regression. Um, we're looking at a data set, and this is video number, I don't know what, in a series of videos. It's part of a playlist. If you're coming at this for the first time, don't worry, we'll catch you up in just two seconds um, and you'll be well on your way to understanding what we're talking about. So first of all, uh, logistic regression, you've got a binary outcome, in this case, diabetes or not diabetes, and you've got multiple possible predictive variables and you wanna know which of these and which combination of these uh, may help us predict uh, the outcome variable. And that's what logistic regression is. This is the data set that we're using. You have access to this data, by the way, if you're working in R, install the ML bench package. Uh, this is the data set that you then have access to. You can replicate everything that I'm doing at home. It's the best way to learn, right? I will also at the end of the video put a link and you can click on it and get access to this page. And that will mean that you can look at this code. You can even copy the code straight into RStudio. There's copy and paste function. And there are these little annotations. So you can hover over the annotations and it gives you an explanatory note um, about all of the code that's there. Okay, and how, how I create, and even the data visa, that's I've got all of that there. Now, on this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. We started off with just a model, a simple model, where we just had one variable, glucose, right? So as glucose goes up, the chances of you getting diabetes goes up, right? And here is our probability distribution. And incidentally, this is the model, right? That's the model. Now, here's the code that we use to create the model. And here is the output. And we can see, boom, shakalaka, glucose has got a positive relationship as we'd expect. Now, we want to start building the model. And we've already spoken in a previous video about adding a single variable to the model. So what did we do? We added down here, we added in, we started with glucose, we added in age, okay? And we took note Right, we took note of the fact that age was statistically significant, that and that the residual deviance and the AIC both went down, all indicating that this is a good thing to add to the model at this stage, to the best of our knowledge. Uh, adding age is a plus. The model has improved by adding this one variable. Okay, so that's interesting. So we can add in a variable. We've also talked about adding in um, uh, interaction terms. So here in effect modifiers, we said, look, let's not just add age as a single variable, but let's, in here you put a multiply in, or a star sign instead of a plus. Let's add age as a possible effect modifier. And essentially the effect modifier here sort of says, well, as you get older, the way you metabolize glucose changes. And so the risk associated with higher glucose changes with age. So the effect is modified. And in this case, it's negative. So as you get older, uh, glucose has less of an effect on your risk of diabetes. Okay, so that's an effect modifier. So we've got a couple of things here. We've got adding in a variable and adding in um, an interaction term. And all of this time, and as we added in that interaction term, again, statistically significant, again, the residual deviance and the AIC went down. So happy to keep that in the model for now. Okay. Notice I said for now, because that might change as we go along. We, so the idea about building the model now, We've asked a few questions, and in previous videos, we've said you need to consider um, the problem of confounding. So if there is a variable that you think is a confounder, in other words, it, uh, and I don't want to redefine what confounding is now, but you want to include variables that are confounders because it, you know the model will control for the confounding. Um, you want to include effect modifiers because it's going to give you a clearer a sense of the actual relationship between predictive variables and the outcome variables, in this case, diabetes. You want to think about collinearity. So if there's very closely correlated variables, anything with a correlation coefficient of 0.7 and more, uh, you may have a problem because they might sort of be explaining themselves away and so in, there could be like a circular logic in the model. You don't want highly correlated variables. So you need to think about these things before you start building the model. And one of the things that we said is even before you start building the model, just check the correlation coefficients of all of your variables against each other. So these are pair wide correlation coefficients and all of these are low. So we're happy to move forwards and start building the model. How do we start building the model? Well, we do it iteratively. Some people start with all the variables and then take them away one at a time until you get to a point where taking away an additional variable doesn't, you know, has no effect. I like to do it the other way, which is start, start with, and in this case, you know, because we're talking about diabetes, we start with glucose because it's the most obvious thing to think about when you're talking about diabetes risk, and then iteratively add in 
a variable at a time. And you could, with each variable, also do a univariate analysis and look at that variable's relationship with diabetes. Add in variables, add in iteratively, so one at a time, put them in, take them out, see what happens. A variable and the variable and its interaction terms, and you want to see what interacts with what. And slowly but carefully build up a model that is the smallest and tightest possible model that you can for that represents a good fit for your data. Okay, and literally this is what I do here. I've I just sort of say, look, let's look at firstly, as we add a variable, is it statistically significant? Answer, if it's yes, then let's move on and ask, does the AIC and the residual deviance go down? And if the answer to those two is yes, then this is probably a good fit. Now, we will also look at assumptions, and that's going to be in the next video. And when we look at the assumptions of the model, we have to revisit some of these things. But for now, we're saying um, and on a very simplistic level, let's iteratively build the model, make sure that everything we add is statistically significant, and make sure that as we add things, the residual deviance and the AIC are getting lower and lower. We want to get them as low as possible, and we can build the model. In this little table that I've got here, I built this model up one variable and one interaction term at a time. And in you know if if it's if I got a green light against all three criteria, then I included it. And if I got uh, any red lights, did not include that variable. Um, and here's the sort of final model. Now, interestingly, I've got a small um, error here in that glucose and age at when in the final model were not statistically significant. So they should arguably that interaction term should come out, even though. In a more simple version of this model, uh, that interaction term was statistically significant. Once we've included, uh, you know, the full package of variables, actually, the relate, you know, the impact of that um, seems to have been explained away by other factors. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, so uh, that's our model. We call it. We want the most parsimonious model, you know, the model that can get us to the right answer with as few possible variables uh, because the model we can overfit the model it can be too many we can make, have an overly complex model um, and when we don't have endless data okay so that is how to build your model the next video is going to be about checking your model assumptions which is important uh, if you want to access all of the code look at this and the annotations associated with the code to do all of this then uh, click on the link that's on the screen right now thanks for watching speak to you soon take care bye